I have returned. So some of you already know, I went to an ayahuasca ceremony and those three nights were powerful, terrifying, healing, transforming. Like I feel like I have a second chance at life right now. And the first times I've gone, because I've done ayahuasca in the past and so forth, and I, you know, you get these amazing, beautiful visuals and this kind of, you're brought into this awareness. But I have never went through a weekend like this before. And I'm still processing. I have much more shadow work to do as I am working, I am integrating, because it's a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to break down each night because, yeah. Each night carried its own message, its own um, revelation, and so forth. So the first one, when we got there, the space, the energy just felt really good. You know, I was happy. We, we did some meditation before we even went to ceremony space and so forth. So it was, it was already like in a good space, right? And I was like, I set my intention for the weekend. And I was like, you know, I think I'm ready to finally heal my inner child fully. Um, and the first night was my most gentle. So you enter into the visions, right? And the visions are so hard to describe because they're vast. And they're like, there's like these lines and then it comes more clear into other colors. And like the first night was like Christmas theme, right? Like I saw like cakes and goodies and lights and it was beautiful. But I had the sadness that I was following, right? I was working through. And, but it wasn't coming through. It's like, I knew it was there, but I'm like, I felt disconnected. I felt disconnected to my emotions, right? Um, and when I went up to the shaman to like get another dose and so forth, like he did, he does like this thing with like tobacco and so forth. And like, I felt like my heart opening. And as it did, and as I was going through this openness and tapping into the space, I realized that I'm allowed to feel. And I know something like that doesn't seem like that deep or even that special, but it was. I can allow those emotions to rise and then I can release it. You know, I can accept and release. I don't need to be held by it. And I found this like gift of presence, the sense of bliss. And right now I'm kind of blissed out. And it's funny because I've gone through so many emotions like I'm crying, I'm angry, I and then I'm happy. <laughs> it's it's been a roller coaster. Like, oh my god, has it been wild? And I definitely felt like the spirits were there with me, you know, the inferno. And I even at the end of the third night, I actually ended up thinking Nema because I've been doing workings with the cliff off, specifically with her spear. So it was just it really tied in, and I just could feel the presence and the energy, right? And as well, of course, Mother Aya. It was just it was it was incredible. So the second night was tough and you know i kind of expect the second night to always be a little rough because it has been the theme and I, but i didn't expect any visions so i usually only get visions like one time out of all three and all three nights i was gone <laughs> there there was no getting up or it was i was there right um <laughs> maybe it's because i actually had the guts to go get more medicine when i needed to like i didn't just sit there like hey maybe something will happen or maybe I should just sit here. No, I like got up and, you know, got the medicine and what I needed. And yeah, and then I was like, wow, wowza. Um, so the second night was a battle. It was hard. I was confronted with a lot of emotions. I went through this whole process of the identity of my gender. So what was interesting when I ended up taking like my dose of medicine, I remember feeling like this masculine energy and I was like, that's kind of weird. I've never felt masculine energy when working with this medicine. Um, maybe there's something mixed into it or whatever it was, you know, maybe it's a spirit. And to only realize it was the masculine male aspect within me. Now, I understand, I have always understood the dynamic of the balance of the masculine and feminine, but I've always had this battle within myself that I felt like I wasn't feminine enough, and I felt like there's this dominant male energy. I'm like, oh yeah, it's definitely a guy in my past life. Like, I've already accepted that idea because I feel like this male presence within me that is of me, right? But I didn't accept it. Like, I'm like, I'm, I, I, and there are certain things like it actually triggered me, right? If I didn't feel like I was feminine enough or certain positions, certain words or behaviors, it was, it's really like this weird 
deep resistance I had with it, right? And I was faced and saw myself with like a penis. I had a bone or two. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> um, it's so funny. Um, but I was like this light, right? There was like oranges and reds and greens and I had like this penis and I was like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, well, well this is a man like, am I, what am I supposed to transition? But I don't want to transition. I actually like being a woman, you know? And does that mean I'm going to date them? And then I'm like, no, I'm just, I am just I am that that that's it I am <laughs> and I, I and there's a more to it I'm just I'm just a being right and then I embraced the smell aspect finally and I named him Sean right so there is no um transitioning or that I identify anything I'm just me I'm just I am right and connecting with Sean I felt like this wholeness like something tying back into together and that I was I, I don't know. It's so hard to describe the experience of ayahuasca, the power, the transitions of what it takes you through, right? And it was just so beautiful um, to feel that. And I remember being so kind of like questioning and kind of going through the process, you know, I'm like, can I even share this information? What are people going to think? And it, the thing is with both the first and second night, my ego was being destroyed every single belief idea like i'm just covering some of it in this video like i don't even remember everything that took place but it was destroyed right um so it, it wasn't easy and then i and then it turns out like i i come out into like the morning i'm feeling good and then i go into the next night and i'm like okay third night there's no way it's going to be like it's these first two nights have been wild. This is probably going to be chilling. It's going to be separation. Maybe I'll go through some feelings. Who knows, right? No, that was my hardest night. <laughs> it was hell. I went through literal hell on the third night. Um, <laughs> I fought it, right? So the third night, I was like chilling. I was vibing. I'm like, and then I, you know, you can hear people and they're going through everything. I'm like, huh, it doesn't really seem like anything's happening, right? I'm like, hey, that's okay. Cause usually third night's never really that extreme, or at least it wasn't the first time I did it, right? So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go up and get another dose of medicine. And I tell the shaman, like, I'm just chilling. And then I go up another again. So I ended up getting three, I ended up doing three doses each night. Um, and the third time I went up, and he's like, He's like, weren't you just up here? I'm like, yeah, but I'm like counting the songs. There was time and I feel like I need another. I don't feel like it's hit. I still like vibing, right? And then it hit and I didn't want it to hit like it hit. I was terrified. Oh my God, you had the visions, you had the thought, you had this heaviness and it was just took over and I wanted it to stop. And I know like one of the people I was like, by like, um, they were like, they had these like leaf rattle things, which are beautiful, but they take you deeper in the medicine. They were like, cause he needed help cause he was going through like an, an intense time. Right. And I'm going with him, but he like got help and they're like doing the leaves on him. I'm like, stop it. Stop the music. Stop it all. Can we just be silent? It was dramatic. <laughs> Because I just kept going deeper and I didn't want to go deeper. And I'm like, I shouldn't have got that third dose. This is, I went too hard. I, I can't handle this. And then I was processing everything and I forgave my mother, right? But that was just the beginning. Like that wasn't even enough, which made me angry. Like I remember releasing angry grunts. I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> like I used sound, I puked, um, I cried. <laughs> it was it was a lot. Um, and I remember like sitting there and I remember them coming out of it. Right. And everything was like the end the ceremonies ended. And I was so deep and I was like, I was like, mother, I, I am exhausted. And I have never been so exhausted in my life. And I just, I just, I just didn't know what to do. Like, I was like, I'm, I want to get out. I, I can come back another time. I don't want to be here anymore. Right. Um, and then my boyfriend reaches over and he says something, right? And I'm like, and I'm like, I just want to sleep. And then I started crying and I just purged. And as I purged, I let go of all this anxiety, all of this anger. And all that was love left was love, you know? It was through the darkness, through the night of the soul, I was able to find my own light. I was able to allow myself to receive that love and to be in it, right? And it's something that's always resisted, you know? I've always had a hard time to be like, they're like love and light, and I'm like, oh, can you stop? And part of it is like, cause sometimes, you know, it's not always appropriately used, right? Um, and sometimes it's a way to hide or reject darkness. But in this case, it was to be able to allow that light 
to allow myself to receive that love, you know, and be in that. And it was pure ecstasy, right? Um, it was freedom. And that's all that was. When there was no anger, anxiety, there is just love. And it is the most beautiful, powerful experience I have ever had in my entire life. And it continues, right? Like, as I'm going through, I'm processing. I'm still going through the emotional roller coaster. As I've returned and I'm releasing, I am holding, I'm going, I'm battling. Like, there's so much happening, right? Like, it, I don't know. I don't even know what is going to happen. All I know is that I am allowed to change. I am allowed to embrace not just my darkness now that I always have and worked with these amazing, beautiful spirits, but I can also embrace the light and that love. I can do both, you know? Who, who is going to stop me? No one. And I am just grateful to be here, to be alive and to connect and honor, not just myself, but all of you as well. Like I just, I remember thinking about many of my clients, many of my friends and just sending this love, right? Just sending this energy to all of these people and holding space and knowing I'm capable of giving that to them now and realizing I can let go of that pain. And I don't know, it was powerful. The most powerful weekend. Like I can go in about the visions. I can go in about my moment of like where I could feel the Kundalini going through and my body moving and everything. But these were the messages, right? I am allowed to fail. I am here. I am. All is love. it's beautiful it really is and it is hard to share or even want to share some of these messages because i feel like i know how i resisted a lot of this and i know we are ready when we are or maybe we never are and that's okay we are all on our own unique journey and whatever we're finding our truth to be you know and i think that's beautiful and i appreciate you guys listening and infernal blessings